Hi, this is Mike Larson for Money and Markets TV. When I look at the sovereign debt crisis and the state of the global banking sector right now, the image that comes to my mind is an avalanche, a disaster that starts slowly, gathers steam along the way, and ultimately mows down everything in its path. Look at what's happened in just the past several days. First, Moody's Investor Service warned of a rapid escalation in Europe's debt crisis. The ratings agency added that, quote, the likelihood of even more negative scenarios has risen and that multiple defaults could be looming. As a result, Moody's may be close to slashing European sovereign ratings across the board. Meanwhile, Standard & Poor's is on the verge of cutting France's AAA rating or changing its debt outlook, according to a report in a French newspaper. That would follow a downgrade of Belgium last week. As for Fitch ratings, it just slashed its credit outlook for the United States from stable to negative. The firm said it has declining confidence that policymakers will do anything to tame our massive budget deficits and sovereign debt load. And that's just the action on the sovereign debt front. Things are just as bad in the financial sector. Moody said it's going to review 87 different banks in 15 countries to decide whether to downgrade this, their subordinated bonds due to the ongoing credit crisis. And S&P went a step further, actually cutting its debt ratings on firms like Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and Citigroup. Let me be clear. I know that the rating agencies aren't always right, and they have a long history of being a day late and a dollar short. They didn't downgrade Enron when they should have, they didn't downgrade investment banks like Lehman Brothers early enough, and they sure as heck missed the mark during the mortgage crisis, rating all kinds of awful securities AAA. But despite all that, ratings do matter. Many investment firms or funds can only hold securities that are rated above a certain level. If the rating on the bank, sovereign or other instrument in question gets cut, those investors have to sell. And that just exacerbates the existing downward pressure in the market. Lower credit ratings also drive up financing costs and reflect the increasing chance that the entity being downgraded will actually default. So you simply can't ignore the downward momentum we're seeing now in all ratings, both for sovereigns and banks. These moves will worsen the funding crisis both here and abroad and continue to drive interest rates higher and bond prices lower. So what about the move by global central banks to make it cheaper for foreign institutions to obtain dollars through currency swap lines? Is that a game changer? I don't think so. In reality, these swap lines have been in place for a while. All the Federal Reserve and the central banks in Japan, Switzerland, Canada, the Eurozone, and the UK did was make it a bit cheaper for banks to use them. Sure, it might give us a short-term rally like the one we've just seen, but if you're buying into it, I believe you're making a mistake. Every single other attempt to stand in the way of the markets has failed. And that's because both banks and sovereign nations have too much debt, so adding more liquidity to the system doesn't fix that insolvency problem. In other words, folks, the rumblings are getting louder, the credit avalanche is gaining steam. Please don't let it sweep your wealth away. I'm Mike Larson for Money and Markets TV. Thanks for watching.